Hey guys, welcome back. This is Neon. I'm here with Giggy Sparkles. Hello. And uh, wow, things uh, just keep getting weirder and weirder with Alita Battle Angel. Yes, and now... the media's relationship with Alita Battle Angel. Her A-B cups were bad before, but now it's because she's whitewashed. She's whitewashed. I was waiting for this. I was waiting to see how long it would take them uh, to play this card because this is the go-to for every, uh, every anime-based movie is always accused of whitewashing the characters. Um, and, you know, the funny thing about this is that Alita herself in the film is not real. She's all CG. Right. And beyond that, it's supposed to be how many years from now and if it's almost like a different world. So I don't think they're going to have, like, you know, it, it races like it's established now. It's a completely different time. Yeah, it's like 500 years in the future. It does not take place in Japan. Um, but, you know, the funny thing about this is that actual Asians apparently are not offended by this film because it broke all kinds of records mm -hmm. in China this weekend. Um, you think that actual Asians would be concerned about this, and they're mm -hmm. they're not. They don't they don't care. Yeah, because <laughs> they it's not don't important. Care. Because she's not even white. She's a CG character. It's a CG character. Oh, this is the same. I know. Dude, I know. The social justice. I know. The social he justice just goes looking writer. for problems to could make a to hissy about. Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Okay, Ronaldo. Here we go. Alita Battle Angel underscores Hollywood's whitewashing problem. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Okay, warning contains spoilers. We're going to spoil the shit out of the movie uh, for you in this. Uh, Alita Battle Angel certainly does its best to create an expensive, expansive, expansive while well, it's expensive and expansive, cyberpunk universe that producer James Cameron and Robert Rodriguez hope does well enough at the box office uh, to turn it into a franchise unlike previous animated to live action adaptations. The global box office is relatively strong. Yes, China loves this movie. However, despite its financial success, the movie continues an undesirable trend, which once again underscores Hollywood's whitewashing problem. We're just mad because we don't, we think that you should make them all women or POCs and not. Is that what the whole thing's about? Uh, well, no. You didn't get anywhere with the boobs thing. That's so not now you're going to try it. this one. So, Captain Marvel's coming out, guys. Hurry! We have to stop We have stop to tank Alita. Alita. We have to tank and, Alita. And, and here's my problem. Why can there not be two strong female leads in the box office? Why does one have to be brought down so the other one can succeed? Why can't they work together? Because that's what they keep saying they want. We need to lift other women up. Unless you're not the right kind of women. Isn't Captain Marvel whitewashing? That's what I said! It's main character because, again... While Carol Danvers was Ms. Marvel and she's Captain Marvel now, uh, the original female Captain Marvel was Monica Rambeau. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who's been sidelined as a little girl. So technically, they whitewashed that too. So, But that's okay because that's the kind of woman they want. So that's completely okay. And uh, Captain Marvel, the male character of Captain Marvel, is apparently being uh, woman washed. I said that's douching. <laughs> She's being douched, and now he he is in that Benning. Yeah, well, so <laughs> that Benning douche, but same thing. So. Anyway, anyway, so they have a problem with this because they're going back to again the fallback is is Avatar: The Last Airbender, which I will I will give them the live action Avatar movie because it was kind of odd that they picked predominantly it was white. Uh, white uh, uh, actors to play, which were, you know, what were supposed to be Asian or, or darker skinned uh, parts. I thought that was kind of odd. And even Ghost in the Shell, I guess I can give you that one, even though she's playing a, a, a cyborg. And it's in a, a different body than what her original was, which was kind of the part of the plot. Yeah. She, um, yeah, she was Asian. Yeah, so Scarlett Johansson, of course, had a lot of backlash because of Ghost in the Shell. So they make a lot of comparisons. Now, here's where it gets really tricky because you can't say that they they whitewashed alita for a couple of reasons one alita herself um is a cg construct she's completely cg and she she could be of any any race right not really. just that it's 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 not a real it's a it's a robot i didn't know they had races for robots <laughs> red, red, cyber cyber racism and that was well it's kind of same with ghost in the shell too right, where so, it might yeah. have been that she had a japanese mind and an american looking body and they never really did explain you know exactly what race she was in in the original but i mean i, I will give you that more than i'd give you alita um and beyond that uh rosa salazar plays uh uh alita and she's a peruvian descent mm -hmm. okay um but again it's not actually her you're watching it's her voice and they motion captured her but like Gollum in lord of the rings uh alita is a completely cg construct right, and i don't so, take her i never took her as being white did you 
No. Yeah, so I, I, I'm She looks this. vaguely Asian-ish in the film. But it's hard to tell because her it's eyes are so big. Yeah, so now here, this is where they really lose me. Um, we've seen this issue recently in Marvel Studios' Doctor Strange where Tilda Swinton was cast as the Ancient One. Okay, so they're going to say that because Tilda Swinton was cast as the Ancient One, which was a, a male, an Asian male. But if they film. had made it an Asian male, they would have been pissed about that because why aren't you letting women have roles? Right, and the thing <laughs> so. is, the reason, and they're not mentioning the reason that Tilda Swinton... Uh, was cast as the Ancient One had to do with the Chinese box office because the character is Tibetan. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want that um, uh, issue because I guess there are some issues with Tibetan monks in China. I'm not exactly sure uh, what those issues are, but whatever the reason was, as I understand it, they cast her as a Celtic character mm -hmm. because they knew the film would not perform well in China or wouldn't even be allowed to be showed in, in China at all. And what these people don't ever seem to understand, and we, we run into this a lot, is that China is a huge, important market for these movies. A lot of the money sponsoring movies come from China anymore, yeah. too. So that's why, like we said, Transformers, a lot of it was done in China. Yeah. That's why we had the Rogue One with a lot of stuff, you know, Chinese actors. Mm -hmm. It's a huge box of a straw. That's why Rogue One got to be played in China. Um, they have a lot of things, like, with different types of movies, depending on the, um, like, the afterlife type aspect and, like, you know, that kind of thing that can or can't go there based on what their belief system right. is. China is a huge part of what they decide, why they decide what they do. Yeah, China, so, China's the huge box office. And a lot of films, I mean, you, know, you mentioned Transformers and Pirates of the Caribbean even. Oh, yeah, it's huge in China. Basically, they just exist. Those franchises exist for Chinese audiences Pretty at much. this point. Because they're not as big in the U.S. as they were. So speaking of, uh, you know, being self-centered -centric, in your, you know, gender or your, your race, these people don't even understand that the, the Chinese box office is huge. And it's not all about Americans. So, right. I mean, talk that's about what, being that's what I'm myopic. Saying. That's like, what I'm saying. China, actual Asian people. Uh, Ronaldo, actual Asian people uh, love the shit out of Alita. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to put that out there. And uh, so anyway, yeah, the latter was notorious for its tone deafness with Scarlett Johansson. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Major Major Mira Killian uh, Kusanagi, yeah, because it was Kusanagi in Japan. Well, she actually was Kusanagi, then they changed her, they put mm -hmm. her in a different body in this one. Emerging as another example of a white person playing a character of color, helping perpetuate the white savior oh stereotype, <laughs> which has plagued the entertainment industry for decades. Oh my God, okay. China doesn't give a shit. That's like when those they girls don't were give wearing, a shit. those girls were wearing those uh, Chinese dresses and people had a hissy fit about it, but the Chinese people were like, no, no, we take that as a compliment. That's great that you're embracing our culture. You know, thank you. And then everybody else is like, how dare they? And they're Japan. like, we like it. This I know. Is, this is what the whole thing, like, you keep applying American social That's justice sensibilities to these other cultures. You're basically telling these other cultures how they should feel about themselves. And but they don't on, give a shit. Based on the writers of these articles ideas. Right. They don't give a shit. Japan does not give a shit about all the uh, quote unquote SJW stuff going on in American, the American uh, anime dub circles right now. They don't care. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They don't care. Stop, you, know, you keep saying stop pushing your, you know, misogyny on us. Stop pushing your whitewashing on us. Stop pushing your Americanized far left ideals on everybody else. Yeah, stop telling uh, Chinese and Japanese audiences what is and what is not acceptable on their behalfs. Yes. They don't give a shit. I always get mad people try to defend my woman's rights and I'm like, I'll defend my own rights, thank you. Right. Go ahead. I mean, how insulting is that that the Americans have to come in and tell tell you what to think? Well, that's why they, they, they mock right. us. So um, I'm just saying. So it does seem progress had been made in moving past such short-sightedness when uh, Ed Screen turned down the role of an Asian character in Hellboy, a character that was, that was quickly recast with Daniel Day Kim in the role. Alita, though, walks this notion no, back. No, it doesn't. Reminding us whitewashing is still happening. Well, let's talk about that. Let's look at the cast. Uh, let's look at the cast. You have the picture of the cast down below. Let's get that. And let's talk about this. Some of the cast. Some of the cast. Well, now, let's go ahead and tell me what you... Uh, this dude here was, uh, he was, I guess he would have been Asian. And, and, and the main villain would have been uh, Asian as and well. And what are they now? Uh, African American. Oh, <gasps> how dare they? How dare how they? So you can't whitewash characters, but you can change them to other races, and that's completely fine. Now, this is a knock to Rodriguez's film entirely. It does have a diverse cast, a strong Latinx yeah. representation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. She's of Peruvian descent, um, Rosa Salazar. But again, the character of Alita in this movie is very like nondescript she she actually does seem more asian esque she looks asian to me but you know she's a complete she's a completely cg construct. it's hard to she's do not... that though 
with the eyes. I'm not trying to like be, you know, that way, but they wanted to make the eyes look like the anime, the manga, have the big eyes. When you do that, it kind of takes away some of the Asian appearance in the character. It just does because the big round eyes are usually associated with Western characters. But, you know, the reason they do that is because in manga and anime, they, they were originally trying to mimic Disney. Disney, yes. Disney, th those kinds of cartoons with the large eyes. So even if a character is, is Asian, in the the anime, a lot of times they do look more, you know, because the art Western. style looks more Western right. because so, of the just because yeah. she has big eyes. The point was she had the big anime eyes. You really can't make them look Asian. I'm sorry. I mean, without being really stereotyping. And if they had stereotyped it that way, you'd have pissed about them stereotyping it. Because no matter what Alina does, you're gonna find fault with it because you're mad because it might take a chunk out of Captain Marvel. Let's be honest and call it what it is. I think we'll call a spade a spade. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah, again, okay, so sure, these actors are A-listers. Okay, here we go, here we go. Wait, hold on, let's go up here. As good as Rosa Salazar is in the lead, Alita ultimately feels regressive. No, it doesn't. Especially the fans of the source material. Who? Who's complaining? I haven't seen too many complaints. Not, no, most people aren't. It's these far left people are. Yeah, um, you can't help but think to yourself as you watch uh, Christoph Waltz playing uh, Ido and Jennifer Connelly uh, playing Sheeran, it honestly can't be that hard to find talented Asian actors to play Asian characters. No! Okay, let's walk through I don't that. think this person actually ever watched any of this stuff. If you watch the OVA, okay, one, uh, Ido and Sheeran, okay, now, Sheeran, as I understand it, she didn't exist in the manga. She only existed in the OVA. Uh, they both have blonde hair. They were like blonde hair, blue-eyed characters. Uh, There's nothing about them to me other than their names that that reminded me of, of Asian characters. They were, they just look like Westerners. They look mm -hmm. like Westerners, even... Even Ido, he had, it was kind of stereotypical, but he had like the big chin and the big nose. Mm -hmm. He looked like Egon Spengler from real Ghostbusters, okay? Um, I, clearly, I always thought of him as more of a Western character. He never struck me as a well, Japanese Well, you know, character. it doesn't matter now because this person says. Yeah, and, and Shirin, again, uh, blonde hair and, and blue eyes from what I recall. Uh, so these actors are A-listers cast in lean roles, but what's the excuse for the semi-pivotal scrap dealer? Uh, Tanji being cast as, as anything other than Asian. Oh. You, you, okay. Uh, this character could have easily gone to an Asian actor without. Okay, well that's true. I'll give you that. Role. Okay, look, uh, wait, they, but they aren't calling it blackwashing. I'm just saying. Yeah, it would have felt so natural the source material. So whitewashing is okay. Blackwashing is right, not. Right. By refusing to embrace the people in overall culture, which inspired the manga, Alita comes off as slightly insulting. Uh, no. The only one that's insulted are people like you. Are people like you? Asia loves it. They love it. And these characters, I'm sorry. You know, watching, uh, watching the OVA, and I watched a little bit of it, uh, you know, to, to refresh my memory because it's been like 20 years since I've seen it. Um, but most of the characters, except for Alita and uh, some of the hunter warriors, to me came across as being more Western, especially Ido, uh, Hugo. I thought they came across as being like they were trying to be more Western. Like you look at some of the Ghibli movies, and those characters are obviously trying to be Western. Again, this isn't a, the future when it's probably everybody's not sort of, gonna. There's yes, no and, ethnic boundaries. Right, that's right. it. So everybody's kind of intermarried and anything anyway. So you're talking, you're completely taking out of context of the time period too. It's like we're on another planet, and it's nothing related to Earth. But I'm mad because you whitewashed characters. Well, you don't know what they look like because it's another flipping planet. You know, it's the same thing here. Yeah. So now they're complaining about uh, Grueshka, played by uh, Jackie Earl Haley. It's they're whitewashing him. Uh, they're whitewashing the villains. Whatever. Uh, I mean, come on. Um, more disappointing is the only other Asian character of significance of the film is uh, Lana Condor's uh, Kayomi. She is one of Aaliyah's friends and source material on screen. She's drastically reduced to a throwaway character because they don't have a lot of time. They're they're condensing the material. They don't have time. Yeah, they don't to, have to, the time to, to do it. Put everything in. At least not in this movie. Uh, now, the manga's creator loved it. Just like uh, Ghost in the Shell's creator, uh, Chiro, and that's fine. Yes, yeah, so the ones of the creators, you know, who are the ones who made it. It's really up to them, isn't it? This is where it gets really insulting. So, the manga creators, both of Ghost in the Shell and uh, Alita... Who are Asian. Who are Asian, were happy with the films made of their creations. We understand. To these creators, it's up to the studios to subvert the material subvert as, they, the material. as oh, they see fit. After all, their original you vision... You mean like he subverts material for this article? Oh my Go god. Ahead. After all, their original vision still exists no matter what happens with the live-action adaptation. Basically, they're saying... They're just saying that. He's patting the creators on the head. He is. It's okay. You like it, but that's because, you know, you don't know any better. But the kind of oh mentality god. that leads to removing the source material's Asian influence leaves a portion of the audience feeling like they're being sold short or worse, excluded. You, mean, you are not Asian. No, you not. are not Asian. And my next thing, is they are the creator, the Asian creators, uh, and they're happy with the movies. 
Who the fuck are you to tell them they're not allowed to be? Well, this is like, this reminds me, I'm not to go back to She-Ra, but it reminds me of all the women who don't like the new She-Ra. Um, they're basically told they don't count it. They don't count. It's the same thing. Now, how come that's a bad, big, bad problem when it's this movie? But when it comes to She-Ra, oh, well, you don't count anyway because you don't matter. You know what I'm saying? It's like, right. pick and choose. Pot or kettle. I'm so tired of the hypocrisy from these people. Uh, oh, speaking of. Yeah, speaking of, of hypocrisy, and this is so hypocritical. You are, yeah, you're basically telling Asians, you who are not Asian, the author of this, this article, are telling the Asian creators of the source material how they should feel. You're telling Asian audiences, uh, including China, which freaking loves it, how they should feel. That is incredibly insulting and, and patronizing. Uh, it feels hypocritical to see how Ghost in the Shell got slammed while Lita is somehow mostly escaping criticism despite making no, no, the no. same mistakes. You couldn't get anywhere with the boobs and the female figure. That's exactly what's And so going now on. you're going there with this because you guys are so desperate. You guys are trying so hard to take Alita down. And why would you want to do that? You'd want to do that because Captain Marvel's coming. And I bet you Captain Marvel will do no wrong. Even though they whitewash characters and everything else in Captain Marvel and she's wearing a tight bodysuit with an athletic build with boobs, that's fine. That's great. Glorious. That's perfect. But Alita's bad because Alita's a threat to Captain Marvel. What's even more shocking is that in the end, Ghost in the Shell actually had more of an Asian presence. It's time Hollywood. Yeah, but Ghost in the Shell actually took place in Japan. It actually took place in Japan. Right. Uh, this takes place in a a, a to totally different country it's world. It's time this author becomes aware there's something called a space bar. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> uh, it's time Hollywood truly becomes aware. That way, Washington takes away a sense of identity from certain demographics. And you're not that demographic. You have no right to speak for that demographic. This is what I'm saying with the she thing. I am the demographic. I am the fan. But I keep getting told I don't count because I'm not the right kind of woman. So who the hell do you get to tell people they're not the right kind of people to watch the movie? You don't get to pick and choose and be offended now and stand up for the rights now when you wouldn't stand up for the rights of people like me before. You're just picking and choosing what fights you and battles you are jumping into. Sorry, it pisses me off. It's great that 2018 had such uh, immense success stories like Black Panther and Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse, which people complained about. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, you know, quite what it should be. But Asians in particular are finding their battle in Uphill One. Why, why is an Asian not writing this article? They had made the Guinea Asian and they had a shit fit about that. Oh my God. Yeah, I know, right? Sadly, Alita is the latest missed opportunity which could have helped rectify this. But why isn't Captain Marvel Asian? Why isn't she black? I know, but she I'm was saying. black when I was a kid. I'm just saying. I'm if just you saying. really want to go there, so many people drink. remember remembered uh, Monica Rambeau being Captain Marvel, and then to have Brie Larson spout off about uh, and equality. She's blonde and yeah, and to have her spout off about equality and people of color and women of color having more meaningful roles when she herself has basically taken a role from. Yeah, she could have stepped down and said, I think you should go with a, Monica, a Monica Rambeau character. Because I think, yeah, I think that would have been great. But she didn't. No, she didn't. But anyway. She cashed her check. Okay, so uh, China. Uh, China, actual Asians love Alita breaking records. Um, so that says so much uh, to yes. me. They're not offended. It, it at reminds all. me of the thing with the dress, with their cultural appropriation. And they're like, no, we actually think that's great. And then the little girl who had the geisha party, and then her cultural appropriation, the Japanese were like, actually, we take this as a compliment in our culture. Yeah. You know, stop projecting your, your issues onto other cultures that don't have the same issues as you. You are not them, you don't get to speak for them. Have a nice day. Yep. So we're going to wrap this one up. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, rants, gaming videos, art videos, and more. This has been Neon and Geeky. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.